This conversation is about helping a good idea end well. In this case, that good idea is a nonprofit that lived in my community for decades. And I had the opportunity to help this nonprofit, quote, put itself out of existence with honor. My next guest joins me to talk about not only the practical how, but also the crucial why we took this course of action. I hope it serves as a precedent that ending something well can be done. I also hope that if you were involved with Christian Services Network, that you know how thankful I am for the work you've done and what an incredible honor it was to be part of the good ending of such a good idea. Let's jump into that conversation now. I want to thank you for joining me on to talk about this experience that we've had. Um, would you would you give us your name? My name is David Leverens. Yes, and what do you do for a living? <laughs> I retire for a living. <laughs> you retire for a but living. But I uh, spent about 40 years as a civil engineer uh, working on big projects uh, around the U.S. and a little, couple of them overseas as well. Mm-hmm. So it's 2023, February, when we're having this recording. How many years ago did you move to Grants Pass? I moved here just more than four years ago from Florida. Mm-hmm. And you're going to be leaving soon again. That's been I, kind of a bit of you guys are I am. Uh, people who move. <laughs> well, we'll be making our 29th move uh, in April, probably. Uh, over 50 years of marriage, back to Kentucky. Not back to Kentucky. It'll be the first time we've yeah. lived in Kentucky. But we'll move to be closer to our family. Yeah, good move. But during your time here, uh, we found ourselves on on a, the same project. Uh, there was a, a local ministry, a nonprofit called Christian Service Network, uh, that needed some help. It had come to a, a stop and we found it. So how, how did you, we kind of came together at the same table to talk about what is there that we can do about this nonprofit? How did you come to that work? I'm aware in many churches that I belong to of ministries that uh, serve people who come in the door and ask for help in one way or another. But this was something new, and it uh, it involved uh, the churches having a centralized uh, organization that they could refer people who came through their door asking for help. And they didn't do this to just move them on to some other, someone else to take care of. Mm-hmm. The churches did this uh, a couple of decades ago. They or- helped organize CSN in order to better serve them because individual churches were less able to less equipped to provide financial support and certainly showers and things like that than CSN was able to do so the churches supported that as a way of extending their ministries to the to the uh, people in need that came through their door and your church was one of the supporters is that how you got connected to this work that's correct i i go to calvary lutheran church and I can't remember who it was who, who mentioned this need to me, but the need took the form of a, of a organize, an organization, not even an organization, a collection of individual people from different churches who got together and say, listen, we, we see that CSN needs help. They need new blood. What can we do to help reinvigorate their mission? And, as a result, and I, and I said, this sounds like something I'd be interested in supporting. So I went to an organizational meeting in, gee whiz, November, I think, of 2021. And, uh, that, that got a number of us kind of stepped up and said, okay, we'll, we'll become the new board. Mm-hmm. We were kind of, many of us were representatives from churches that had been long long-standing supporters of CSN. That's that's correct. And it was a, a, a great satisfaction to me that throughout uh, the year or so that, that we continued to work on this, every member of the board came from a different church. It wasn't mm-hmm. a church 
that was pushing it. It was a group of churches, mm-hmm. and it remained that way through, throughout. So there was a lot to do uh, when we arrived at that table and started to assess where things were and talk about where things could go. Um, what all do you remember being on that to-do list as, as, as we kind of got together, talked about it, focused in on what were some of the action items for that that was something that we could do? I mean, the first one was becoming the board, which is kind of a interesting process because yeah. we had learned that the state no longer even recognized, they didn't have CSN on, on its maps anymore. It didn't. Uh, CSN had, for I, I don't know the reasons, I don't know the background, but uh, had stopped sending in quarterly reports, which the state requires for uh, retaining uh, any organization as a, as a non-for-profit organization in the state of Oregon. Uh, and they stopped doing that like nine years ago. And the state typically gives you a couple of years grace period, and then they just take you off the rolls. So once you're off the rolls, then you really don't exist anymore. Mm-hmm. CSN had a had an account. They paid their bills. They ran their showers. They ran their program, but they didn't exist. Mm-hmm. So that was something that was high on the agenda to try to resolve. Mm-hmm. Uh, another thing we discovered early on uh, was that they, when they stopped sending in their reports, they also stopped paying their payroll taxes. You think, well, this is a nonprofit organization. Well, there yes, was one, one but employee. There was an employee, exactly, yeah. Josh. Uh, and so there were a number of different types of taxes that, uh, that should have been taken out that weren't. Now, I, I do know that they had some justification for that, uh, feeling that it wasn't exactly salary. It was a, a stipend or what I, I don't know what, I don't know the details of that, mm-hmm. but I do know that as soon as we checked with the state, the state said, no, 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 they're very delinquent. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll come back to this. Yeah. In the meantime, we also discovered that we didn't know how to get into the mailbox. They so had, They had a P.O. box. We had, they had a P.O. box, didn't know how to get into that. We finally... Uh, once we were aboard, yeah. which kind of was it? There was a few surviving board members, and we kind of got a oh, spiritual yeah. blessing, <clears throat> almost like a we had to find them and kind of say, "Well, would it be okay?" Even, if, and then we kind of formed an ad hoc board for a nonprofit that only existed really in the eyes of the state from a financial, per, per, you know, from the tax, you know. That's that's correct. Uh, the the mem- surviving members of the old board voted to uh, bring on new board members, Mm -hmm. which any board can do. Mm -hmm. And those new board members were us. Mm -hmm. And we we couldn't find any bylaws, really. I don't know that there ever were any. So we were just trying to do our best with... Trying to to do our best. Above reproach and, uh, you know, with with, with how we handled this. Exactly. So once the new board was in place then the new board could issue resolutions which allowed us to get into the banking account. And when I say get into it, uh, uh, allow new people to be Mm -hmm. signatories on the bank account and to open up the post office box. When we got into the post office box is when we realized we had a problem with the State Department of Revenue. And we had a problem with uh, the cable company who hadn't been paid for eight months or so. And we had a potential problem with the IRS as well. And I'll talk about all three of those. Um, and, and so we realized fairly early on after the new board got in place that CSN was carrying a lot of baggage that would, would make it very difficult for us to establish or reestablish CSN's ministry. Sure, to even think about either rebooting that or creating an, another ministry attached to it. Yeah. So yeah, we, well, that was, that was what we've concluded was it would make more sense to start a new, uh, in quotes, nonprofit, but a new organization to do the same things that CSN was doing, uh, and allow CSN's main mission to be uh, putting itself out of existence with honor mm-hmm. to resolve its debts, which that was basically it to resolve its debt and honorably. Should, and we should, in the midst of that, because I, 
you're going to get into the juicy stuff here, which is what I think really be very interesting to, for, for our listeners to hear. But, but what's also important is to, we did have a conversation about, is this our mess to clean up? Can we let this fade into the, in, into history? I mean, we could just leave the bank account alone. We could leave the PO box alone. Those things are going to eventually, something's going to happen, but we don't have to touch it. You know, like if the, if the, if the IRS or if anybody wants to get into the bank account and take the money out because it's owed, like we could just walk away and start something new and just kind of let this pass away in whatever way that's going to happen. But we, you know, we talked about like, or do we have an opportunity here to help this ministry that was set up many years ago has done been a real beautiful presence in our community. And I'm not trying to make it paint us as heroes or anything like that, but, but I remember it was, that was, that was an important conversation to say, you know what, let's see if we can help this nonprofit, um, end well in the best way that we can. Can we, let's see if we can get in and do something about this, uh, so that, th- so that this, this nonprofit can have a different kind of ending than just fading away. Mm-hmm. Cause I think in, in, at least in my experience in the nonprofit world, that happens a lot. People start a beautiful thing, a good thing. It gets up and running and then something happens, whether it's the board ages out and, or people lose interest and they go after, start up another thing and it becomes a toy from last Christmas that, you know, was kind of forgotten about. Um, and that, that, that always bothered me. So I was really thankful that our, our board just said, you know, let's, Let's talk about what we can do in the future, but in the meantime, let's see what we can do to kind of help close Christian Service Network out uh, in in the rightest way possible. <laughs> yeah, and and I think you've said it very well. It it was a way of honoring the work that CSN had done for twenty years or so, uh, and I always thought of it as as kind of a challenge, actually. Uh, so I, I never doubted that we could resolve the debts. Um, but, but getting that done with three different, uh, debtors, uh, was a challenge for me. And I thought it was, it was clearly the honorable thing to do. And mm-hmm. I think the board was very much of the same mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm thankful that you were chairing the board and that you came with the skills to see these as a challenge that could be engaged were for, for mm-hmm. me. I would be like, whoa, let, let's maybe we should just walk away because I don't know how to touch this thing with a 10 foot pole because it's just outside of my wheelhouse. So maybe get into, get into those three debtors and, and kind of the story of. Sure. Of, we uh, owed about, uh, all, all told about $20,000. Uh, CSN owed, owed that. Um, uh, and they each have different stories. Um, uh, the IRS was, was a debt that we learned about uh, shortly after we took on, took the over with the new board, uh, we came across a letter from the IRS that was a reminder letter. It wasn't a demand. It was a reminder that we still owed them $760 from 2010. And we found this in this is 2021 that we kind of first picked this letter up. It's way past the statute of limitations, way past any time that the IRS could demand payment. I have no idea whether it was legitimate or not legitimate, but they basically um, reminded us that we hadn't paid our, our taxes from 10 years earlier. The IRS is not easy to contact. Mm-hmm. As anyone who has gotten on the phone and tried to talk with somebody at IRS, it, it, you have to be patient. Patient to stay on hold for quite a while. Uh, patient to have to make several follow-up calls. Uh, but I must say, once you get them on the phone, they're, they're reasonably people. They under, they try to understand what you're asking and try to give you the best response you can. And they were, they were unable to tell us. They didn't know what this letter was all about. Hmm. And it took, it was until like August, I think, but eventually uh, they said, you know, we don't have any record of CSN owing us any money. CSN had a federal tax ID number, so they could 
They knew. It was hard for us to account. find. That was another little oh, we challenge. Did have to, we had some to find the tax ID number. Like little, somewhere along the line, they had changed the tax ID number, and uh-huh. that took a while to, to sort out. In fact, that was the primary delay, I think, be, uh, throughout most of the first half of the year, was trying to get IRS to even talk to us because we didn't have the right tax, uh, tax ID, ID number. number. But we eventually got it. And, and in August or so, they said, you know, bottom line, According to our book, CSN doesn't owe us anything. Hmm. Forget about the letter. Okay. okay. Well, that was nice. That was yeah. the, that was pretty easy. So debtor number one. Debtor number one. Debtor number two was, was, uh, our cable company, which had shut off service in August, perhaps for non-payment. I'm suspecting that. Uh, but had, uh, several months of payments prior to that. This is August 2021. Um, they had a uh, service they provided for two or three months prior to that that they hadn't been paid for. And they had uh, sent a bill that totaled $743. So we didn't, we didn't have money like that to, to pay them off. There was a little bit of money left in the checking account. More than that, more than $743, but we also knew we had a big bill from the state we had to resolve. So I had some interesting conversations with, with the cable company that, uh, the company had by that time, uh, passed us on to a collection agency and I had some nice discussions with the collection agency, you know, and I, I asked them, well, what will you do if we don't pay this bill? Well, We'll shut you down. Well, we're already shut down. Sure. Well, we'll, uh, we'll access your bank account. Well, yeah, but by the time you get there, there won't be anybody, anything left anyway. Cause you're anticipating the state no. is going to probably need. Yeah. The state's yeah. going to take what it, the state will take whatever we have left. Yeah. So, you know, that's not a big threat to us. And I said, well, okay. Part of this is the equipment that you never return. Oh, okay. Well, we can fix that. We can find that. So we, we found, found the equipment. The... We brought it back. And now that brought the bill down to 400 and some odd dollars. And they said, well, how about if you, we'll settle for $328. I said, no, my board tells me that they're willing to settle for $200. And they're not going to pay any more because they owe a lot more than that to the state. Well, how about 328 no, you're not hearing me. They'll only pay, we'll only pay $200. Well, we can't accept that. So, okay, fine. If you don't accept $200, I told them, then you can wait. The state will take all the money we have and there'll be nothing left over for you. And they thought about that for a while. And said, well, how about if you pay us $200 now and then you can pay us on, on time for the rest? You're not hearing me. Mm-hmm. And so that was two or three phone calls went that way. And finally, we, they said, it's, that's not acceptable to us. I said, okay, fine. You can, you can wait. Mm-hmm. And as it turns out, then several months later, after we had reconciled with the state by some miracle, we had a little bit of money left over. And I called back. And they said, "Oh, we've written you off. You don't. Okay. Owe, you don't owe us anything." Okay. Oh, that that was pretty good. Yeah. The because, state because we were ready to like we want to. We would have paid them. Pay what we can. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, the state is is also an interesting story, and it was the bulk of the money that we owed was to the state. Um, the Department of Revenue, the Oregon Department of Revenue. O-D-O-R, had sent us letter after letter after letter about all these quarters when we didn't pay the employment tax. Um, and we didn't know we were getting these letters until we got into the po- mailbox and we had a whole host of letters. Okay, so fine. I, I, I started talking with the state and the one thing that really made it better with the state was I didn't try to hide anything. Mm -hmm. I told them who we are, what we're doing. I told them that we're, we're not operational anymore because mostly because the showers weren't 
were broken and uh, and hadn't been. And all we were trying to do was honorably close the thing down. Well, being open and honest with the state was the right approach because they they really worked with uh, CSN to figure out a way to resolve the debt. Mm-hmm. And the first thing they do is, well, we'll waive the fees, the penalties, and the interest. And that brought the debt down, that component of the debt down from about $9,000 down to $1,500 or something in that range. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when you don't pay your taxes, the amount you owe increases really, really fast. So when they got rid of the extra costs, uh, the amount we actually owed um, was much less. Another thing that we did was we went back into the bank account and got bank records for the past eight and nine years and reconstructed the quarterly reports that we had failed to submit. And that allowed us to estimate the number, the amounts that we had paid uh, CSN employee, the employee over the past eight or nine years. And it allowed the state then to also assess how much we actually owed. And so that was an important factor as well. So they, they got it down to 15. And when you say we backfiled, that was you. Again, I'm thankful. <laughs> well, I mean, it, yeah, it was a matter of digging out the forms, yeah, looking at the like, bank records and trying to make a list. It took a little bit of time. But yeah. It was, yeah, I say it's a challenge. Yeah. Uh, so when we, $1,500, okay, fine. So we, we voted as a board to pay the $1,500. We did. And Department of Revenue said, good, we're good with you. Yeah. The fly in the appointment there was, that there's another state agency called the State Employment Department. And they assess a different kind of tax that we didn't know about. So we existed still in the eyes of two departments, two departments who of the state. cared two, about the money. Two taxing yes. bodies. We didn't even know about the second one. How and did, how did and, you find out about them? Well, the second one sent us a letter that said, now that you've submitted all these quarterly reports, they come to us too. Okay. And we realize that based on what you submitted for the last eight years, you didn't pay the taxes that we're supposed to collect. And okay. that was another $9,000. So it was kind of the same approach. So Call, different, different phone number, different, different, phone, different people, conversations. Called them up and had a nice conversation, very open, honest with them. And at that point, we did not have the money, not to spend to pay much of anything. And so they, to make a long story short, they said, well, if you give us all the money you have left, we'll call it, we'll call it even. Fair enough. So I, uh, I told them how much it was, it, how much was left in our bank account. So, okay, you write us a check for that amount. It was less than 9000 okay. <laughs> oh my, it was, it was, uh, like $1,800 or yeah. something like that. It was very, very little. So we wrote them a check and they were satisfied. They took care of us. And at that point, then all of our debt was zero debt. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, so the, the main thing we did with CSN after we started up, uh, um, Christian Compassion Network, the new organization, uh, was to take care of the taxes. And once, once that happened, then we, we kept the Christian Service Network's post office box because we had to have some way of getting mail. Mm-hmm. And we kept the bank account. Uh, and I think the only thing we paid in the bank account was for the post office box. Mm-hmm. We didn't really spend any of it for any, any uh, other purpose. And in the midst of all that, we were... We got a list of the contributing churches because none of us knew the the whole list. You try to figure out who has been donating in the past, communicate with them about, hey, please don't send any more money to Christian yes. Service Network because we're trying to close it down. So we're trying to connect with them and let them know what's going on because a lot of them had that in their budget. Here's Here's how much every month we send to this organization. When we first opened the mailbox, we found all the ding letters from the state, but we also found a bunch of checks mm-hmm. that churches had continued to send in. And so we had a discussion about what should we do with this money? And we decided that it, 
again, trying to do the honorable thing and all, as well as the be pragmatic about it. We knew at that point that six months or eight months or a year later, the state was going to take it all. Mm -hmm. So we figured, what is the point of depositing those checks into our account and then having the state take it as in from back taxes? So we sent them back to the churches. Mm -hmm. We we made yeah. it a policy not to accept any donations, and yeah. we didn't throughout our existence. So all the money already in the bank account, we used that to settle the debts as you just kind of walked us through. Yeah. And the checks that were in the mailbox returned to the churches with a kind of a communication of, of what was happening. And we were able to um, kind of have one final meeting as the Christian Service Network board and make a motion to uh, close the bank account. You know, whatever money is, we, I think we had a little bit left. We had a little we, bit left. We were able to share that with a, another nonprofit in town that was doing some like-minded yeah. work and then make a motion to dissolve the board, which was yep. kind of a... A simple but meaningful little moment um, for the story of Christian Service Network. Yeah. Well, I'm curious in all these processes, like what was what was familiar to you from previous experiences, and 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 what was new? Did anything kind of surprise you or take you off guard uh, throughout this experience? Well, uh, because I I had no idea what to expect, I wasn't surprised by. <laughs> by anything you mentioned but kind of just it, being open and honest that was a you said that well, a couple of times being open finding people were personable in, once you got them on the in phone in my life experience that's been very useful to me and that that's my nature to to be honest with people and open with people and i've found that to be to the few times i've tried to get away with something i've always regretted it mm -hmm. um so uh yeah, it was it was an interesting experience. Also, an experience that I felt was uh, consistent with my desire for service. Um, I I have some talents. Ministering to people one on one is not a strong talent of mine, and I admire people who have that in them. Uh, but I do have. Uh, a talent for, or I have a heart for it, but not the, not the talent for it. Uh, but I do have the ability to, um, keep track of financial matters and mm -hmm. this kind of thing. And it grows out of somewhat of being an engineer. Um, and I do have, because of my faith, I have a strong belief and confidence that I'm not going to get in big trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, if I put it out there, in theory, the new uh, board, new CSN board, was liable for this debt mm -hmm. personally. Right. So when we when we when we and formed, so we were there was a there was a risk there. Yeah. In my mind, it wasn't a great risk because I I know that you know I, I'll be taken care of. God's going to take care of me mm -hmm. and the rest of the board, and so. What I, so there wasn't really a lot that surprised me. It was just, it was interesting the way it panned out. Uh, it was a sense of a, a good feeling that we we're doing this honorably, a sense of, of a little bit of grief. I wasn't there during the, during the heyday of CSN, but yet I still felt badly that to see that have to come to a close mm -hmm. without having, uh, you know, being able to continue that mission in under CSN, uh, it, it will continue under some other form. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Any other uh, comments or observations that uh, I haven't really given you space to, to I, make? Well, I there are several things that I'm 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 glad we did. Mm -hmm. One thing is that as a board. We, we brought in a spiritual advisor. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that a lot of nonprofits do it that way. Mm -hmm. A uh, local pastor. A lo who this was a be. local pastor mm -hmm. who had expressed an interest in what we were doing, uh, from the very beginning. But someone who could, could, uh, tell us what, uh, service to the, people in need in our community really looks like and how we can stay focused on that um, 
And when, as we uh, were thinking about policies and procedures, mm-hmm. now, how we can, how we'll we can pause bring you for that a second, in. Because we, we did two things. We were closing out CSN and we were trying to start its success organization. That's true. I am jumping a, a little bit CCN. ahead of myself. Yeah, Christian well, Compassion Network was this idea. That we're trying to launch something new. And that board, we brought a spiritual advisor in, and he thought that was kind of a new, different thing that you appreciate. Yeah. Uh, we, in everything we did, we, we were thinking ahead toward having a, a, an outreach, a Christian outreach component to the kind of work that we would be doing. This is a, a, a component that was an undercurrent of what Christian Service Network had always been doing, but never particularly pronounced, so far as I know. And it would take the form, in my mind, of when someone comes in uh, for help, one of the questions that they would always be asked would be, do you have a local church? Or would you like me to pray for you? Mm -hmm. And if they said if they said they weren't interested, that's fine. We we still certainly mm-hmm. give them all the help we could, but we'd always have that that conscious effort to make sure that we we provide a window into their souls if they only say yes. Uh, and this is this is what the uh, spiritual advisor was intended to uh, to bring to us. So that's that's one thing I I uh, thought was uh, was important. And I'm, I was pleased to see. You know, I never really thought and still don't think that money is the problem in, in serving people in need. I think in, in the public, uh, the public environment, governmental environment, money is a problem. Not only not having enough, but allocating it in the right way. But from a nonprofit standpoint, the money is out there to be had. Churches are willing to to donate to, to organizations like this, especially when it helps them do the services that they provide, the services that they would like to provide. But I never thought that money was going to be an issue. The issue is in finding the right people to help. We were very fortunate to run across uh, a wonderful young woman who uh, has has her own nonprofit actually uh called every everybody's people mm-hmm. and when when we were struggling with how we could do the showers under the new organization she said let me take the showers mm-hmm. i'll just run with it you mm-hmm. guys have enough to do mm-hmm. and it allowed us to develop other programs that that uh, uh could serve the uh, those in need um it's finding people like that who have a heart for face-to-face, hands-on de- uh, uh, serving mm-hmm. people in need mm-hmm. that are in short supply. And uh, so we never got to the point where we really were, were trying to staff anything, uh, staff the showers or, or uh, provide other services. But that would have been the difficult part. Yeah. The money I never was worried about. Yeah. Well, uh, for those who may be interested, you know, we did work for quite some time. We had a, a, an idea of how we, we could, um, launch a successor to Christian service ministries. And we were going to call it the Christian compassion network. And one of our, we really wanted it to be set up in, in the most sustainable way so that it could, be around 10 years from now and doing, doing well. Um, and, and the pathway that we were on, we, we came to a, a door that wouldn't open for us. And uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, one, one being that of, of your, your move, but also just, um, I think sometimes things go in seasons and you kind of have the energy for a leg of a journey. And then when you get to the end of that leg, there's a natural pause that needs to happen. So, we had to kind of pause that, kind of shelve that idea for for the for the time being, and maybe it'll be brought back down. Maybe the the right group of people will come together uh, to kind of pick that up again, or pick up something that we haven't even thought about—a mm-hmm. different way of of meeting these needs that we see in our community. Uh, so that's kind of uh, to to be seen of, of of what God may want to do with with that work that we put in. Um, but it was. 
it was neat to for, for me to bear witness to the honorable closing down of of a of Christian Service Network, and I think that was good and right, and I'm glad that you were and and then also to brainstorm about what what could a new organization look like and. What if we had the spiritual advisor? What kind of policies and procedures could we put together? And that was very valuable for me. Um, so I was thankful to be on that journey. Um, and again, I, you don't, you don't see for, you don't see things end well very often. And so for me, it is important that when I do see it, I want to, I want to put a big neon sign, flat, a big neon arrow flashing over it to say, look, it is possible. There are ways and, and to, 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 as, as a Christian to, to, to praise God for, for those opportunities to see, to see that and see that as a testimony that we can share. So yeah, Dave, thank you so much for, for sharing. Is there anything else you no, forgot Josh, to talk about? Um... <laughs> I always like to talk about these kinds of things, and Josh, I appreciate uh, the opportunity here. Yeah, and I wonder what God will do with what you've learned here in Grants Pass in the next chapter of life that you begin in Kentucky. Who knows? Who knows? God knows. We'll keep it. Keep our ears open. Thanks, Dave. All right. <laughs>